Go 
and come by here. Yes, Lord. Let's move to our next position. Come by here. Come on by here, Lord. Come out here. Oh, Lord. Come by here. Yes, Lord. Our last song will be, I Gave Myself Away on the Handbags. We, as Christians, ought to give ourselves away to be used by God. God loved us so much that he gave his only son so to die so we could live. Let's give ourselves away by living for God. And now the hymn of choir will play, I give myself away.
We celebrate our youth and our young people. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. While we celebrate our youth and our young people, they... Hallelujah. We serve the awesome and amazing God, and God has... God has truly blessed the New Beginning Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Has blessed the New Beginning Church in our present and in our future. Thank God for who God has selected and what God is doing with our youth and our young people. God has tremendously, wholeheartedly blessed us. He has tremendously blessed us. Thank you, young people. Thank you for being young. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for, for your contribution to the world in which we live. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Amen. And he has selected some young people to keep this train of moving. Amen. Amen. Things that we used to do, we can't do anymore. But thank God for young people who will make a difference in the world in which we live. Let me call your attention to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. In the New Testament, the book is Matthew, St. Matthew, the chapter is 25, verses 1 through 13 is where we'll be reading. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. I want to remind you, in case you don't remember, we serve the awesome and the amazing God. <laughs> he is God all by himself. He is, he is God. Amen. Make me want to play a drum. Two. Hallelujah. Go on, do it then. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13 is where we are today. When you found it, you will discover these words. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise. Now five of them were wise. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Amen. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise said, but the wise answering said, saying, No, lest there should be not enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom, broom, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready, those who were ready, and those who were ready went in with him into the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other 
virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. I want to talk about keep watching. Keep watch. Keep watch. Keep on watching. Keep watch. Keep watching. In the text, the, the author, St. Matthew, compares the kingdom of heaven to today's successes. Really, it's about the second coming of Jesus the Christ. It's about being diligent in preparing for your future. It's about being diligent in preparing for the coming, the second coming of the Savior. Kim Roxy. Kim Roxy is now known for her Monique products. Lanique, Lamique products. These are beauty supplies. Kim Roxy is a product of the Or Davis Music Ensemble. Here in the picture, you may recognize one of the persons sitting there when she was kind of younger. <laughs> Kim Roxy was and is a product of Or Davis Music Ensemble. And she credits her discipline to music, and she credits her, dis her discipline to learning piano and piano recitals. For she was giving, and she was determined. She gives credit to her determination in music, and it, she will tell you that it set the standard for her discipline throughout her entire life. Here we have Kim as a young music student. Then she went on to receive the Excellence or the Black Excellence Award. In the third picture, you see young Kim Roxy standing in J.C. Penney, where she now is putting her products, her beauty products, in her makeup line on sale. It is called Lamique Beauty, L-A-M-I-K. If you want to stop by J.C. Penney to patronize, just remember she came from right where you are. Lamique Beauty Supplies. She is the founder and the owner. She is an excellent example of success in a success story, even though tragedy had struck. You see, Kim Roxy didn't let tragedy, excuses, and sorrows hold her back. For as a young lady, she, her mother passed away. As a young lady, her mother passed away and succumbed to breast cancer. She didn't use that, at that tragic event as an excuse, or neither does she while in her sorrow. Kim Roxy went on and use her platform today to empower women, to build self-esteem for women. And she's the founder of Breast Cancer Awareness for African American Women for the Rose. Kim Roxy beat the odds. Can you, will you beat the odds? Kim Roxy moves forward. Kim Roxy did not have excuses. But she moved forward with all she had. Mother not on the scene, but didn't use it for an excuse. And you know, men don't know how to be mothers. You see, men are good for, for some things. Number one, when it comes to children, men know how to teach a boy how to be a boy. And men know how to show girls what to expect in another man. But it's when it comes to the nourishing of the mother, men just don't know what they're doing. Those of us who have been single parents with a girl, let me tell you, it's a hard road to hold. I don't know how that interprets. 
but it's a difficult thing. But Kim Roxy did not allow the tragedy to hold her back. I submit to all the young people in this room that's under 120 years old. Don't let life circumstances hold you back. Don't let tragedy get in your way. Don't let things that could happen and have happened to you be a stumbling block but a stepping stone. In the text, St. Matthew chapter 25, in the text, we find Jesus speaking and he's speaking to his critics and he is speaking to us today. In the text, we find the fact that he compares the kingdom of God to real life. He says in verse number one, he, he says, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins. And he described these ten virgins, five as wise and five as foolish. You know, I'm not a great mathematician, but I know that's 50%. What he says is, if the world around you has 50% of the people as foolish people and 50% as wise people, you need to be wise. He, say, he says in the text, first of all, he says, he says to us, he says to us that the kingdom of God is real. In other words, we must be born again. In order to be successful in this life, in order to be successful in life after now, you need to be born again. You need to trust Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You need to get to know him in a very, very special way. Just believing the story that over 2,000 years ago, he hung, died, and bled on a skull hill called Calvary. Believe the story and trust the story to get you to heaven. You must believe that he was buried in a barber tomb. And you must believe and trust the story that early that third day morning, he rose with all power. You must believe this story in such a way that you believe that this is the only way for you to get to heaven. Yeah. Buddha can't get you there. Oh. Muhammad can't fit the bill. Right. Confucius was wise, but he wasn't wise enough to get you there. You must believe that Jesus is the son of God. Yeah. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. We must be born again. We must be saved. We, we must have the assurance of our future. Children are dying senseless death all day, every day. Senseless death, sleeping in their bed, dying. Walking the street, dying. Playing basketball, dying. Let me just share with you, you must be born again. Seniors would say, this life is hell. There was an old R&B singer at one time that sung, sung a song, and some of you all can complete it for me. She says, I am catching, and there is no reason for you to catch hell down here and die and go to hell. Therefore, you must be born again. Preparation is necessary. People will tell you that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And in that preparation process, you need to get to know Jesus as your Savior. Preparation is necessary. Don't, verse number two, do not be labeled as foolish because you do not give your best and you do not give your all. Don't, don't, don't be labeled. Don't be labeled as foolish. You see, you see, in the school system, they love laboring our children, black and brown as people who cannot learn. But let me just share with you, they can label you all you want. They can call you anything they wish to call you, but you are not foolish and you are not stupid. The psalmist says in Psalms 139, 14, he says you are beautifully and wondrously made. It didn't say you were stupidly made. 
It says you are beautifully and wondrously made. Great are the hand and works of God. Don't focus on the size of your lip, the size of your buttocks, the size of your breast, and think that identifies you. God has beautifully and wondrously made you. Other folks spending a whole lot of money just to look like you. They tan so they can look like you. They have surgery so they can look like you. And then you trying to have low self-esteem because of what God has built you. Young girl, young boy, hold up your head. God has put a lot in you that he's put in nobody else. Oh, the text, the text declares in verse number two, don't allow people to label you to be stupid. Don't allow them to label you as being foolish. Do what you have to do to make things work for you. Kim Roxy made it work for her. She made it work for her. I mean, it, 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 she made it work for her. J.C. Penney has picked it up. And so she, she's selling her very own product. She came up with the own, her own name. She came up with the whole brand. She came, with the whole in, came up with the whole ingredients. And let me tell you, if she can do it, you can do it. Right here in this church today, we have scientists, we have inventors, even if we have ditch diggers. Be the best dick digger you could ever be. Do all you can do and make it worthwhile. Preparation is necessary. Don't be labeled as foolish nor stupid because you don't give it your best and you don't get it your all. We have to understand that the children that we have are gifts from God. I don't care how they got here. It doesn't matter whether daddy is on the scene or not. Everybody got a daddy whether he's on the scene or not. It doesn't matter how you got here, whether you were in wedlock or out of wedlock. Let me tell you, you are special to God. The Bible says that precious are the children before the Lord. You see, the church has messed this thing up so badly. The church, you got people who have been saved two days and now they are holy. Now they act like they just stepped out from under the clouds. And now they are able to judge everybody. Young people, let me just tell you, when you get in trouble, run to the Lord. He can meet you there. When things don't go right, run to the Lord. When you get it, look at you, let me tell you, your pastor has to run to the Lord. When Satan gets on my track, I know who to turn to. And when my own sin tries to reveal to me that I'm less than what God has made me, I know how to run to the Lord. The, Bi the Bible says, the Bible says that we are led astray by our own fleshly desires. So when we sin, we sin because we want to. We, 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 let me just share with you now. If, if you ever get caught in sin, it's not because of COVID-19. It's not because of God. It is not because of the devil. The Bible teaches that it is our own flesh of desire that lead us astray. And therefore, we need to know who to run to. David knew who to run to. When you look at Psalm 51, David said, have mercy on me, O Lord. Renew a right spirit within me. You have to know and you have to run to somebody that can change your situation. Too often we put it on Facebook. Too often we put it on Twitter. And those people are struggling worse than you are. At least you have the Lord on your side. Give it your best. Verse number four. Apply yourself in all that you have. Apply it right now. Do not put your talents on layaway. Do not put your skills in on the back burner. Give it all you have. Give it everything you got. Give it to the Lord right now. Because the Lord can use you. And can, he can use you with power and grace. It says, it says these, these guys, in verse 3, it says they showed up. And when they showed up, when they showed up, Guess what they did? When they showed up, those who were foolish took lamps, but they didn't take oil. Does that make sense to you? 
What good is a lamp without the sufficiency of oil? What good is it to have a, the children don't identify to these lamps anymore, so, so what good is it to have a flashlight with no battery? Whenever the hurricane is about to hit, they always say, make sure you got a, a case or a rolling uh, suitcase or something, and you put all your supplies in there. If you put a light in there, you need batteries to go in the light. The foolish showed up with no batteries. The foolish showed up with no oil. Now, let me hit those who are over 50 and let you know, they showed up with no, no, no kerosene in it. It's like they showed up with the glass lamp. They, they showed up with the wicker in place, but they had no kerosene. They had no gasoline. They had no fuel supply. And they're going to the wedding feast. When you look at weddings these days, they dress like the foolish. I, I, I told my wife, I, I said, them, you know, at funerals and at weddings, you can see all the goods. Y'all get that when you get to the house. <laughs> you have to get to a point where you prepare for your blessings. Be prepared to be blessed. Because when you're prepared to be blessed, it won't be a hard thing to be blessed. It doesn't matter what side of the track you came from. It doesn't matter what side of the bayou you came from. It doesn't matter whether you were born in one war or the other. Let me tell you, God has a blessing for you. It is just for you. And he's going to do it just for you. God has a blessing. God has a blessing. And it's, the songwriter says it's your name on it. And, and if it's my name on it, what are you doing with it? Because as a matter of fact, the rewards of the righteous are in the hand of the unrighteous right now. And the unrighteous is using our stuff. But don't you know when God gets involved, he's able to bless us so we can get our own stuff? Apply yourself. Verse 4 says, apply yourself with all you have. Don't just do enough to get by. No, don't, don't, don't just do enough to get by. Don't, don't, I mean, some people are doing enough. Some children are satisfied with the C. Some children are even satisfied with the F. Some children are satisfied with the D. But let me just tell you, you are a material. You are A material. You, you may not get an A every time, and I'm all right with this, but you ought to get an E in conduct. It, it just ought not be where you make an A in, in class and have an unsatisfactory conduct. You have to understand, you got to bring your A game. You got to bring it every day. You have to prepare for the next morning. You have to be equipped for the next day. Because it is competitive out here. Folk are looking for your stuff, and they're going to get your stuff if you procrastinate. So give it all you got. Be diligent in getting all you need. They showed up, and they didn't get all they need. They, they showed up, and, and when they showed up, they had some of the stuff. It's like, it's like someone that's late every day, and they're running out and they lose or they drop or they leave one of their shoes. Well, I'm going to go anyway. Well, do you need that? <laughs> it's like a child going to school and he loses or he leaves his science book and he has science class that day. It's because you have to get all you need. Let me tell you, young people, just because you are smart, people don't hide you just any kind of way. One young, young man graduated from high school, told his daddy, his granddaddy, he said, Daddy, I'm going to do my own business. I'm not going to college. I'm going to do my own business. Well, what business are you going to do? I, I, I'm going I'm to work for myself. Well, what, what, what's going to be the industry that you're promoting? I'm going to have my own business. But now it's time to enroll in school, and you don't have your own business. And I said to him, I said, young boy, you need to understand that you need to get your education so when you do have your business, you can have something that can lead you smoothly through it. 
Get all you can while you can. And th those of you in high school, don't sit out a year. Don't sit out a, a, a semester. Don't sit out a summer. Go on and get it now because it's getting more and more expensive every single day. Get all you can while you can. Then when you get old like me, you got to think through it. You got to pray through it. You got to get help through it. You need a tutor and all that kind of care. No. While your mind is fresh and while your mind operates like a well-oiled machine, get your education now. Matter of fact, money is not that important. You have a job, and your job is to do your chores at home, obey your parents, go to church, get some discipline, and do what you're supposed to do in school. That's your job, full time. You have a full time job. You, you, have, you can tell your friends tomorrow, I have a full time job, and then give them your job description. You have a full time job. You, you already employed. You already self employed. You have a full time job. And mom and daddy should not have to ask you to do your job. Don't have to ask you. Last two weeks I was at home. Last two weekends I was at home with mama. And when the dishes piled up in the sink, guess what? Somebody called me on the phone. I said, hey, I'm busy now. You know. Because when you have a job, you don't get rid of that job simply because you're grown. You have a personality by now that's been built into you to get it done while you can. And no one has to ask you to get it done. Be diligent in getting everything you need. We look at, we look at verse number four. And we see how they handle things in verse number four. When we look at verse number four, it is the extension of verse number three. It says, but the wives took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Verse number five says, but the bridegroom delayed. And it doesn't matter whether the bridegroom delay or not, you got to be ready. In the words of Dr. Cosby of the Wheeler Avenue Church, COVID-19 presented us with great opportunities. We all was locked in, locked out, and locked to do what we needed to do. We, we, we had an opportunity in, in COVID-19 to do anything we wanted to do. What did you do with that opportunity? We could have written a book. We could have enrolled in a class. We could have done some exercise. You could have gained some muscle or lost some weight. You could have done anything. You could have saved some money. You know, the, the mileage that you put on your car costs you a lot of money. But when COVID-19, everything was shut down, those essential workers were delivering stuff to your front door. You were saved. You should have saved a lot of money. And that money, that savings ought to reflect in your bank account. You could have saved money. You could have done some bonding with your family members. They should know you by now like they've never known you before. You should have done some bonding. You should have done some bonding. And you had peace and quiet. Silence. Oh, if I could just have silence. If I could just sit for a moment and, and no questions are asked, no demands are made. Then I would use that silence for meditation. You should have not only gotten to know your family well, you should have gotten to know your God well. You should have been in meditation talking to God and, and talking to him about what's next. You see, church as we knew it is over now. Look around. Look, look around. Church as we knew it is over. It, it's, always, it's always a trip to me when people get all emotional. I did a funeral here and and I recognized the members, and that's the last time I saw them, and the first time I saw them in three years. And, and, and when I made phone calls to, to invite everybody on back to the church, I made phone calls in the middle of the conversation. A young lady said, you know, now this is October. You know, Pastor Dave, when you open up the church, we're going to be, now this is the this week after we buried the deceased. You know, people are emotional. I mean, things are, are spiritual now. So the next week I called just to check on them and when I called to check on them, she made me a promise. 
She said, my family member and I, as soon as you open that church back up, we're going to be in the building. That's because I spoke well of her mother, spoke well of, of grandmama, and, and then called to check on them. And I'm such a great pastor now. We're going to be in that church. And my reply was, baby, we've been in the church since April. So it told me you weren't in line in church. And you weren't in present in church or in person in church. And we've been in church since April. This is October. And even from that conversation that happened a year and a half ago, they have not shown up yet. Don't let your emotions get in the way of your blessings. Don't let, don't let what you hear, don't let what you see, don't let peer pressure, don't let your emotions get in the way of your blessings. Yes, yes. We could have been reading, we, we could have been praying, we, we could have been focused. We, it, the COVID-19 offered us great opportunities, but we did the same thing we were doing before it. You see, there are three entities that's, that's the most lied on entities in this world. There are three entities. Number one is God, because the church folks said, God told me to do it. <laughs> Number two is the devil, because the church folks said the devil made me do it. Number three is COVID-19. I ain't showing up down there because of COVID-19, but I saw them at the rodeo. I saw them at the, the food pantry. I, I saw them at the grocery store, and people are just packed in there. Family reunions. I've come to the conclusion, Brother Ivory, that they believe that we're manufacturing COVID-19 at the church house. We're, we're making it here. We're stirring it up here. We're mixing it up here because they can do everything else but show up at the church. And when it comes to a cover charge, if you're over 40, you know what I mean. They can pay cover charges everywhere else, but they can't return the 10% of their gross income back to the Lord. Let me tell you, the church is the first thing that suffers when people are suffering. Verse number five. I guess I better move on before I lose my crowd. But while the groom, the bridegroom delayed, let me just tell you, God has perfect timing. And God's timing is not our timing. God has perfect timing, but God's timing is not our timing. I said last month, young folk don't get in a hurry to get grown. Folk are paying for your food. They're paying for your electricity. They're paying for the fuel for you to get here. Let them pay for it. Enjoy the moment. Because when you get grown, something's going to happen. You're going to have to pay for it and you're not going to want to. And not only that, I believe like this. There come a point in your life when you are a person and now you are grown. It's time for you to start taking care of mom and dad and not mom and daddy taking care of you. Verse number five. Verse number five. We need to understand that God's timing is not our timing. He will delay. That's where our faith come in. When God delays, our faith is on trial. Whenever God delays. I know you've gone to churches where they, they call the demons out and say, Lord, bring them out right now. If God chooses not to bring them out right now, then what you going to do? I know you've been there where, where, where we and we ought to believe that God is a right now God. We ought to believe that God is our own time God. But God's time is not always our time. And when God delays, he still hears you. When God delays, it's for your betterment. When God delays, God is working behind the scene, doing what we cannot do in front of the scene. God has perfect timing. And because God has perfect timing, we need to know when to sleep and slumber. And we need to know when to rise up. Look, look at the text. The text declares, the text declares in, in, in verse number five, the text declares that it is a fitting time to sleep and slumber. You got to get rest. 
Lady back home, Miss Jane Simpson told me, boy, you, you can't eat it all, you can't get it all, you can't drink it all, you might as well go home and get you some rest. She said to me, you might as well get you some rest because you're going to need your rest. And when we look at the text, the Bible says all 10 of them, they slumbered and they slept. So there's a time, the Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything. There's a time to sleep. There's a time to sleep. So they slept. And when they slumbered and slept, they realized that it was time to sleep. But there's a time to work also. The wise writer in Proverbs says it like this, a little slum of a sleep, a little folding of your hand, and your whole field will, will rise up and grow up. It says, it says that if you just sleep on and sleep on, some people, they just love sleeping. There are some people sleeping right now at 1130. They still sleep. They slob and sleep. If the game begins at, at five today or four today or six today, they'll get up right, for, right time for the pre-game show. They still sleep. Let me tell you, if you're getting 10 hours of sleep every day, you're not getting much done in the run of a day. The Bible says they all slept, and they all should have slept. And when they slept, they, they slumbered and they slept. Verse number six says that at midnight there was a cry. Midnight is not today and is not tomorrow. You see, you can't stick mid midnight on Sunday, and you can't stick midnight on Monday. You have to wait to 1201 to say it's Monday. You see, midnight is that time where you cannot, you, you cannot predict what's going to happen. It was at midnight. When Paul and Silas was in the jail, they sang and they prayed, and the doors of the prison flew wide open. It was at midnight. Even though you can't designate what day midnight is, you can get your blessing at midnight. The, the problem is we want to just continue to sleep. And, and you know, the thing about church folk, they will do everything else on Sunday. And they will, they will claim that the Lord says it's their rest day. They will do everything else during the week. They will do everything else on Saturday. And then they say, this is my only rest day. But don't you know it's the God we serve that woke you up this morning? It's the God we serve that enables you to work from Monday to, to Saturday. It's the God we serve that keeps his hands on you. And every time you wake up in the morning, he has his hands on you. And the, the, the senior saints would say it like this. It was God that reached down from heaven and touched me with the finger of love. My eyes flew wide open. It was God that put one foot in front of the other. It was God that keeps our mind, the mind, the mind, the mind. Let me tell you, you can be healthy, you can be built like a brick house, but if your mind is crazy, you're crazy. I'm so glad, I'm so glad in the 2000s they told me what, what bipolar was. In the 90s, I didn't know why people were acting like that. They had a personality this day and they had a personality this day, and then some of them had a personality, two different personalities the same day. But thank God that now I know what bipolar is so I can identify those with tripolar. We have to understand that if God doesn't keep our mind, our minds cannot be kept. I thank God every day for keeping my mind. Some people right here say he done lost his mind, but it's God that keeps my mind. When God keeps your mind, and your midnight shows up, you better trust him. There was a cry that comes out at midnight. Midnight represents an unexpected time. Jesus is going to show up unexpectedly. There may be a warning. There may be something that, that will warn you, a cry out loud, but I guarantee you somebody going to miss the warning. Let me tell you, now, I used to have an afro way bigger than Sister Carter's afro. God is giving me a warning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I used to be able to run and, and jump and leap and I can't do it anymore. God has given me a warning. I used to be able in the morning time jump up out the bed and roll over and jump up on my feet. Put on my clothes and run out the door. I can't do it anymore. Now I got to stress this leg and that leg and bend this arm and that arm before I get up. And then many times I hear myself, my inner self, talking to my outer self. Saying, oh, don't move like that anymore. It's because God is warning us. And every time I see an old man or old woman walking across the street, limping on a cane, God is warning us. And he's warning us that Jesus is coming back. We got to get it right down here because he's on his way back. And it may not be a cry made at midnight. The Bible says a cry was made at midnight. At midnight is an unexpected time. You may have a warning. You may not have a warning. The fact of the matter is you need to be ready. You need to be ready. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. You have to be ready. Get ready now because if you're not ready now, he may come right now. Verse number seven, we need to understand that it's time to trim our lamps. It's time to, to modify our behavior. It's time to make sure that we get it right one of the worst statements you can say is that, oh, I've always done it this way. What you just told me is you have stopped growing. You have stopped progressing. You need to make sure that you progress. You need to make sure that you learn something else. Make sure you enroll in something else. Make sure you do something else. Don't do the same thing you did last year. You have to learn to trim your lamps with oil. This proves that you're prepared. It proves that you're prepared. Number, verse number eight says, don't depend on others in what they have. Verse number eight declares that, that these who didn't bring enough, what they did, they asked other folk for it. I want to say to you, don't depend on anybody else. And let me just stop and talk to those of you who have parents, cousins, uncles still living. And they love you real good, a heap and a plenty. And you know they're going to leave you some when they leave here. Let me tell you, don't depend on somebody else's death in order to get you blessed. Folks fighting over other folks' stuff, it doesn't belong to you. You can't miss what you never had. If it doesn't belong to you, forget about it. It's not worth losing a friendship. It's not worth losing a relationship. It's not worth losing a family member over somebody else's stuff. It's not your stuff. Young people, be prepared. Pay your own life insurance policy. And if you can't, pay your mama and dad. Whatever you do, make sure that you prepare because the day of reckoning is coming and the day of death is coming. So don't depend on other people and what they have to make you blessed. Get your own. I might as well just say this. When I came to Houston, I was dating this girl in the 80s. And you know, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't bother me to, to help take care of somebody. It doesn't bother me to bring something to the table. But the moment that girl said to me, I left the country city and came to Houston to find somebody, some man, to take care of me. I said, oh, Lord, how fast can I run? This relationship is over. I am done. And I don't mind, I don't mind, I don't mind. I think everybody ought to bring something to the table. And I think men ought to take care of their wives. But when she came with the purpose in mind, and when she let me know she had that purpose in mind, I fell flat out of love. There's a thin line between love and hate. I fell flat out. I mean, I fell flat out of love. <laughs> the wedding ring that was on display, uh-uh, baby, we got to do something about that. That's over. We done. 
And to this day, she doesn't know why we've done. But let me just share with you. When you look for somebody else to take care of you, young girls, don't look for a man to take care of you. Have your own job. Have your own education. And make sure that you bring something to the table as you surely make sure he brings something to the table. A 50-50 marriage is a failed marriage. Let me just say to you, if she's a 50% woman and you're a 50% man, you got a 50% marriage. Everybody got to come 100%. Everybody got to come straight. And if you go into marriage counseling, lay it all on the table, your dirt and your filth. Because it, what you do not lay on the table is what's going to shipwreck you later on. So, so you need to understand that you need to make sure that you don't depend on other folk. All right, Equip yourself with your own stuff. Uh -huh. People don't have enough for you and them. Yeah. Especially in this economy. I mean, I mean, women now ask, can you, if I come visit you, can you get me something? If, if I stop by, will you? Will you do something for me? And men, and men are asking, if I come by, will you feed me? Because that, that $3 hamburger now is $8. And if you get a whole combo, I look at my car, that's a baby. This is a sandwich. And some french fries that I don't even want. But it's cheaper for me to get the fries in a drink that's going to tear my stomach up. It's carbonated. And you charging me $9.72? My God, I stopped at the wrong place. It was just a couple years ago, it was $3.95. And then I go to the next one, now it's $12. So men going by women's house, baby, I really love you. What you got to eat? You got something to eat right here? Because inflation, you need to make sure you handle your own stuff. Siblings need to stop fighting on what their parents left. And parents, get it correct before you leave if you want to see your children in unison. Get it right, get it right. Set them down and tell them. Write it down and tell them. Get your lawyer, tell them. Pay that little money that the lawyer charged you. Get it right. So the neighbors won't be saying it ain't been the same since old Susie died over there. Don't depend on other people. Where there's a lack of preparation, there will always be a lack of supplies. And your supplies will run out. The senior saints would say, save some for a rainy day. Because a rainy day is coming. If you get a lot of money, you can't do but a few things with money. You can save some. You can share some. You can invest some. And you can spend some. Ain't nothing else you can do with money. Nothing else. Nothing. Not, not a thing else you can do with money. Money is a tool by which you can use. That's why Paul says to Timothy, it is the love of money that is the root of all evil. It didn't say money. He says it's the love of money that is the root of all evil. Because the Bible also teaches that money answers all things. Money answers all things. You got a bill due? You, money answers. You got, a, you got grocery needed? Money will answer it. You got surgery that you're going through? Money will answer it. Money answers all things. But you can't fall in love with money. You can't interrupt relationships because of money. It's just money. It's just a tool. It's just an instrument. Make sure you get your own. We have to teach our girls, baby, make your own money. Because guess what, young lady? When he paid the boss, he paid the cost, he wants to also be the boss. And with your able attitude to roll your neck and shake your head, you know that ain't going to happen. So save yourself some time by getting your own. Verse number nine, there's a cost to living, especially living on certain standards. There's a cost to living, especially when you want to live on a certain standard. 
Don't try to keep up with other people. You ought to have a budget. You ought to have a budget that you live by. And you ought to have a standard that you can maintain. Don't let other people influence you to get anything else that you don't need. Don't let other people influence you to do something crazy. Stay focused. Stay with the Lord. I know the old folk over there at the New Beginning Church, old folk, but baby, we didn't get bald, old, and gray just by being fools. There's a cost to living a certain way. There's a cost to living with certain standards. And there's a cost for your blessings. You must pay the cost yourself. There's a cost for your blessings. Your blessings will cost. And if you didn't pay for it, somebody paid for it. When we look at the same civil rights movement that we had in the 60s, we have it in the 21st century. In the latter part, in, the, in 2021, we have the same movement. But guess what? It's hard to build it up now. We have the same movement. The same movement is going on. And it's going on. Children are marching in the streets. Same way they did in the 60s. People are being pushed aside because of their hairstyle. Same way they did in the 60s. We have to understand that regardless of the color of our skin, we are somebody. And we are somebody that symbolizes hope. Let me tell you, young people, we're depending on you. We're depending on you to make it right. We're depending on you to go forward. We're depending on you to be the, the inventors of today. We're depending on you. But it costs. Verse number 10 says, if you're not prepared, you're going to be left out. If you're not prepared, you're going to be left out. If you're not prepared, you're going to be left behind. If you're not prepared, you're going to be left without. Always be ready by being in the right place at the right time. Always. Look at when they left, when they left to go buy some oil, then the bridegroom shows up. But if they had been prepared, they wouldn't have to go and buy oil. They missed their blessings because they weren't prepared. And then they show up late. Now, you all know how I feel about lateness. I mean, it makes my hair grow. It makes dandruff in my hair when I just think about lateness. If you're going to be blessed, you got to be before time. And if the color of your skin is a little pigment darker, you got to be better than the rest. And you are better. I went to an all-white college, an all-white college in Mississippi, and I went to the orientation, and I'm just sitting there looking around, looking around the room. All-white college. I didn't know it was all-white until I had enrolled. It was in Mississippi in 1981. 1981. It's still, they still carry themselves like this 1960. I'm looking around. I look around the room, and I went home, and I told my mama. I said, Mama, I went to orientation today. And I was the only fly in a bowl of milk in the room. She said to me, baby, you got to remember one thing. Whatever they can do, you can do better. And it's that one statement at the age of 18 that has bridged my life from Kent to Ken. It's that one statement. Young people, let me make it sure that you understand. Anything that anybody else can do, you can do it better. Stay focused. Remember your purpose. Obey God. Stay focused. Remember your purpose and obey God. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do this. You can do it. You can do it. Anybody else can do it. You can do it. And check this out. Even if no one else can do it, you can do it. They said that Jerry Rice from a small Mississippi school, Mississippi Valley, about 16 miles away from where I grew up, they said Jerry Rice would never make it in the NFL because he didn't go to a school large enough to compete on a high level. But let me tell you, now Jerry Rice has set records, holding records, and he's in the record books from now on. 
Jerry Rice made Will Salat Cotton look good in college. Then he made Joe Montana look good. And then he made Steve Young look good. Let me just share with you. Regardless of where you come from, regardless of your background, you can do this. It doesn't matter if anybody else has done it. Every time they told me, you cannot do it, I said, well, let's see what God says about it. And whatever God says about it, God can make it happen. You can receive your blessing. Always be where you're supposed to be and accept your blessing. Don't apologize for your blessings. Accept your blessing. Somebody's going to get locked out. The Bible said the door was shut. The lock was on. And here they come back. I need to say to somebody in here, beg and won't get it all the time. You know, we like to use that, that parable of the woman beating on the door and, and beating continually on the door until the unjust judge opened the door. But let me tell you, sometime begging won't get you in. The Bible said they came knocking, they came crying, but begging had to had to keep begging. Beggars had to keep begging and they had to keep begging, but begging didn't get them in. The master will not change the process just for you. The master won't change the process just for you. We want God to move heaven and earth for us. But we don't want to move just a little bit for God. We don't want to make any sacrifices. In order to get your blessings, you need to make sacrifices. You have to make sacrifices that others don't make. Be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. Be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. Be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. In school, children laugh at nerds. In junior high school, they laugh at nerds. And in high school, they laugh at nerds. In college, they laugh at nerds. Students that are real studious, students that are getting their lesson. But five years later after college, that same nerve they made fun of, now they call him boss. The same little nerve, female nerve they made fun of, now they call her supervisor. My question always has been, do I want him to be my supervisor? I want to be his supervisor. Do I want him to tell me what to do with his ungodly self? Or do I want to tell him what to do? Preparation makes you who you are. The master will not change the process because of you. If you're not prepared through salvation, if you're not prepared through sanctification, then you're going to miss your blessing. You need to keep watching. You need to keep watch because Jesus is coming back. You need to keep watch because you don't know the day nor the hour in verse 13. You need to keep watch because the same Jesus they killed on Calvary. The same Jesus that hung between two feet. The same Jesus that died on Calvary. The same Jesus they pierced him in his side after he died. The same Jesus they buried in a borrowed tomb. The same Jesus that rose early that third day morning. The same Jesus that caught a cloud and got out of here. He's coming back again. And he's coming to get a church without a spot on wrinkle. And he's going to take us to a prepared place for prepared people. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Keep watch. If you're here today, you're listening today, and you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. You can get to know him just as you are. If you would just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead.
Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe that you are now saved, born again, on your way to heaven. For those of you who are in between church homes and don't have a church home, the door is open. This is your moment, this is your opportunity. I recommend the New Beginning Church. The New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Inbox us, come down the aisle, let us know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We magnify you, Lord, for being good and being God. Bless us to keep watch. Bless us to do those things that prepares us for the future. Keep us in your will. Bless us to stay focused. Bless us to remember our purpose. And bless us to obey God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Yes, now, yes, now. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. I say it's offering time. It's offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, raise your hand way up in the air and you will be served. For those of you who want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your offering, your gifts, you can do so by mailing it to the New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, 77, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Let us read this scripture together. If you would stand to your feet, let us all stand and read this scripture together in unison. We want to read it like we really, really mean it as we prepare to give our tithes and offering. Let's go. Give and it shall be given. King James there yeah, all the way. Let's try it again. I mean, that's this is like, what is he reading? I'm not. All right, yeah, leave me out. Give. Okay, let's try it one more again. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together to make room for more. Running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you will get back. Luke 6 and 38. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask this side to stand. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. In Jesus' name, amen. And follow first impressions from the rear to the front.
It is His will that every family uh, as they've had that death in their family. Amen. We're going to pray for my family, lift our, our family up in prayer as, as Brother Brown Lee has gone on to be with the Lord. And you see that his brother is listed on here, Audrey Brown Lee. We want to lift, continue to lift him in prayer. We want to lift Sister Eileen, Eileen Cow before the Lord. She's one of the cyclists that cycle with us. And I want to say thank you so much for coming out yesterday all of you who came out yesterday thank you so much for for being a part of uh, cycling and walking and running and thank you for your gifts we'll be taking gifts we'll be taking gifts uh after up up until november the 20th for the roads we want to be a blessing this year to the roads we do not have our goal reached yet so please ma'am please sir write your checks to the roads and give to the roads Amen. We're praying for Sister Helen Hanna. We're praying for Brother and Sister Katrina Whitlock. We're praying for Sister Lillian Darrington and Brother Audrey Brownlee and the Brownlee family. We're also praying for youth and young people who are in school and praying for all those who are part of the school system. Amen. So continue to lift these young people as well as the school system in your prayer. Amen. We are we are looking this month at clergy appreciation month this is clergy appreciation month so we want to recognize our clergy and appreciate them and show them appreciation today uh, we have vaccinations at holy trinity mb church holy trinity mb church today we are having vaccinations a uh, special thanks to all of you all who donated and will donate to the roles we'll be accepting throughout uh, the month and then uh, up to November 20. Amen. I uh, I was in the point where we were about to make our escape with our fire drill or danger drill, uh, but I had to change it at the last moment. So today was the day since it's nice weather outside. But I do want to go over it. I do want to go over. You can you can close it down. So we love. I do want to go over it. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church on our broadcast. Thank you so much. We. Um,